Any other adjustments? Okay. Just to clarify the presentation from the Memorial Finance Committee about update and also about the funds. Yes, thank you, Paul. I have an item, but I think it's probably brought up better brought up under select board concerns because it's not specifically related to this agenda. Okay. I uh, also Sue Lovering from the Tree Board. Thank you. Had on a little bit of an expansion uh, to cover uh, grant application also. Thank you. Yeah, I'm against expansion. Yeah. Well. So under the item number two, on request number for two. water service. Yeah. yeah. There's also discussion of a grant that's unrelated to the water service. Okay. I think that covers that. Cool. Um, in reviewing invoices and orders, just a reminder that we had talked about this previously. <clears throat> Most of the board at this point has reviewed. Everyone has reviewed. Woohoo! So checking that off the list. Uh, were there any questions? Actually, I won't check it out. I haven't yet. reviewed them yet. You have they been oh. passed? Have they been passed around? Oh, I thought that's what I you thought over to Mark. I gave them to you. Oh. Like that one? Oh, 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 okay. It's, Those it's in the no. All right. I didn't Obviously. I didn't look at it. Uh, but I'm sure they're fine. So you're signing things without no, oh, I've got two signatures on this one. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, for clarity's sake, we need to look at the things on top of the folder and then open the folder and the folder will contain invoice backups. Yes. And this packet that Rosemary hands out is supporting documentation if you'd like it. So That's it breaks it down. Status. That's a budget status. Or yeah, but it can, oh, the budget status. Okay, sorry. Yep, ignore me. Are there more There's only two signatures on both those. Is there more that are already in here? No, that's, that's on top. Just going on that. And this one. There. Did I sign it? I don't think I've already signed everything. Yeah, the one in there has two signatures. Okay, for for board for board's sake, <laughs> this is worth stating again. I think <laughs> when we go through the orders and the invoices, when you open the folder, make sure you look for every stapled printed page that is not an invoice on top you should be signing each stapled item and then they'll stack on top same thing we'll always have a signature for a stapled bundle on the top i like those little uh, sticky arrows that say sign here that's too much work rosemary's got better things to do we can turn a page it's okay the staple is our indicator uh okay now that we've wasted five minutes that we were going to get back, <laughs> uh, it was time well spent. We need to review and approve invoices from March 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, uh, minutes. Minutes. Sorry, uh, not invoices. Minutes. Um, I'm fine with motioning to approve minutes from March 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, Shane wasn't technically a board member for the 6th, but I'm he was here for the meeting. So why don't we do it? Why don't we break them up? All right. Motion to approve minutes from March 6th and 7th. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So have it. Motion to approve minutes from March 8th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So have it. There was a problem. There was no, there was no second. second. My first year, year. Um, so I did six and year. seven because this is the seventh, the town meeting minutes. Yes, okay, yeah, because the four of us were on the board and then the eight Shane voted on. Oh, he just wanted to... he abstained from the six and seven. Okay, right? All right. Yes. I apologize. I, I didn't mistakenly showed it like on the board. He was not on the board, and I mistakenly didn't ask for it, abstains <laughs> during the voting process. I think we're good, right? If Donna's I did abstain on the first motion, just yes. to be clear. Thank you. Okay, uh, select board issues and concerns. Mark? I just want to follow up on, um, you know, I, I brought up um, investing, you know, the money that we have kicking around in accounts um, to move that to a higher interest account. I just want to, you know, I talked to Rosemary, talked to Diana, and just see if that, just keep 
my finger on if we're able to make headway with doing that. Should I check the rates, special rates that bank it currently is in? I don't want to have a bank fail on us, <laughs> taking out all that money. Well, hopefully we won't invest it unless it's federally deposit insured, right? All right, but she's worried about taking it out of our our bank right now and putting it somewhere better that our bank might fail us pulling that much money out. We well, want to start a run on the bank. Yeah. Uh, it could keep us on track. It's all very fun. Can, uh, that was Rosemary. Can you work with Rosemary and report back Rosemary. at the next meeting about this? Mm -hmm. I'll be right. glad to. Perfect. We're good with that, then. And Rosemary is a treasurer, so anything that Rosemary is not comfortable with when it comes to moving money, I would just argue. There's several banks that are offering some fees now around 4% versus what we're doing less than one now. Right. Understood. Okay. I will talk to Rosemary and you and she'll tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, yeah. And then she'll do what she wants to do. Uh -huh. uh, Duncan, you had an issue too? Um, yes, I have two. <laughs> Um, actually, um, Mark Mark alluded to the fact that we attended an ARPA yes. meeting this morning. Um, I think we get, came away with some really interesting information, including uh, potential opportunities, library being one, um, a significant source of funding, a significant source of funding for energy improvements for municipal buildings. Um, and I think the biggest takeaway I had from the entire meeting which I have never heard before, and I'm trying to verify now, is that we can actually use ARPA funds to pay for expenses that we have in our, you know, like monthly expenses, the orders we just approved. Operational. Operational expenses in the current year, in next year budget, and take the money that we essentially offset by using the ARPA funds, put it in a separate account, and that fund would not be subject to time constraints or time requirements such as 2024 and 2026. Fascinating. That and, and is, it can be invested in a high And we got that information from Doug, what was his name? Doug, uh, he was the assistant Deputy, I mean, the deputy of the uh, Office of Administration. Right, of the, agency of administration. Doug, whatever his name was. Uh, and numerous questions were asked about that and answered all in the affirmative that that was an acceptable practice. So I've got a call in to Katie Buckley at VLCT. Katie is sort of the ARPA expert, and she has been working directly with federal people on this. My suggestion is if that is in fact possible to do, we should do it post haste, and then we will not be subject to the 2024 and 2026 time constraints. Yeah, okay. Good um, then the other thing I want to do, just bring up um, somewhat related, maybe. Um, I, would, I literally made my eye twitch. My eye is twitching. Is it? My, my, my ears are twitching. My, my <laughs> brain was twitching. Um, so I, I had sent out an email earlier to, to the full board, and I, it's probably appropriate to discuss it in open session about, I would really like to see soon um, an agenda item discussing whether or not what direction we want to go with the fifty thousand dollars that the voters approved um for economic community development whatever it is so i'm hoping that can get on an agenda um so so we can have a discussion our like first april meeting we need to dedicate as much as possible and i don't want to say fully dedicate because i don't know the answer to that but I think we need to have our priorities discussion, like what our collective board priorities are. And hopefully that can lead to a discussion I've been talking with Paul about with uh, board planning commission. There's gonna be a lot of activities we're gonna have to focus on in the next few months around ARPA economic development to your point, follow up on monthly report, hopefully those kinds of things. And also the um, planning commission has their 
town plan due in the fall of this year or next year of this year, 2023? Uh, we just started to rewrite, so it'll be about a year off. 2024. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of things happening, and I feel like after we have our priority meeting, touching base with planning commission seems wise. Um, so anyway. I just don't want to lose. I, I think we've been given uh, money, um, and I, I think we should act on it sooner than later. So I just, I'm just really hoping that it can get on a very soon agenda because I think there, you know, I don't think we have, uh, I can tell you personally, I think we should hire an individual. I don't think that's a universally held opinion on the board, um, but I think we need to have that conversation um, and figure out what direction we're going to go. Understood. Yep. yep. Okay. Any other board issues or concerns? Uh, just briefly, Duncan, if you'd copy me on your conversation with Katie Buckley, I've got a few questions about that. Replacing, using it, I mean, we did claim it as lost revenue and using it and using that to free up. I've got a few questions my, of my own that I'd like to participate in. I've got Ron's too. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, you would Eric Bailey, the village manager, went to that meeting also. He came back and said the exact same thing. Yeah. Derek Bailey. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Um, interesting and exciting developments. Um, next up is select board issues and concerns. The treasurer's report. Rosemary, what do you have? Okay, I handed out the budget status report. And we have received our reappraisal money in the amount of $11,883. Should I put that in the reserve fund now? We have it budgeted for this fiscal year, correct? Yeah, I don't see why not. Any objections? Didn't we, and I think this was an Eric uh, request, but didn't we say we were going to budget that, not put it into the reserve fund? So I think the money we were going to put in the reserve funds was from the surplus, not the thirty-seven hundred. Yeah, no, and not to not this to this yeah. I think the, if unless I'm greatly mistaken, I think we planned on budgeting the money that we got toward to put towards the operational annual budget. Okay. Um, I want to say it was thirteen thousand dollars that we budgeted for that one. Okay. Rosemary, we should just make sure before you do anything. Uh, and not applying it anywhere for two weeks is okay? Yeah. Let's do that. Um, we did, under select work expenses, you got reappraisal fund for $3,405. What did we not do? We reserved from the prior year. Right. Yep. Yeah. And you had assessor contract services is fifteen thousand. For the current year. For the current year, yes. You know, maybe I'm maybe I'm mixing apples and oranges here. I think the I think the thirteen was what we proposed in the 23 and four budget. Under expense? Oops, here we go. Uh, under, well, Paper. we would receive it as revenue. Right. right. Well, we planned 13,000 for expense. Okay. And would we? On the revenue side. So. On the revenue side, would we? What would that come in as, Rosemary, on the revenue side? This year we received eleven thousand eight hundred and eighty three dollars. But do you know what line item it would have oh. been attributed to? Equalized uh, maintenance of green Yeah. Okay. What section is that? It's on the first page. It should it's be the, state. State, 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 state federal, federal revenue. And it's on the ground. Row thirty. Page eighteen, row thirty. These are so strong. We had thirteen hundred ninety eight parcels at ten dollars and fifty cents. 
That's what we were reimbursed for. Yes. Yeah, we showed it as revenue coming in, going directly into the reserve fund. Thirteen thousand in, thirteen thousand in reserve. Next prediction you right that's the next calendar year it would be the uh, previous report yeah. that was a good right. one too yeah. but we have that one here too. uh let's take a follow-up and make sure i'd actually like to check my, my notes just to make sure too good so let's circle back rosemary okay don't let us forget mm -hmm. Um, okay, what else do you have? Uh, total budget spent so far is 57%. Hopefully we won't have a bad spring. And current taxes collected to date is 79.12%. And that is slightly above the previous two years. Good. We like have received a liquor license from Redbox LLC, which is Moose down here, mm -hmm. for an outside consumption permit, first class license, and a third class license. And he has paid all the rest. That's a standard? Yes. Did we put any? Um... Conditions to the hours on that for the outside portion in in years past. You want the same hours? I can't remember what it was now. That midnight, was it past midnight or not? For tobacco? No, this is no, not for outside oh. alcohol consumption. Oh, I don't remember. For some reason, 10 p.m. is in my mind. Oh, it's late. It's been it's been after that. That. It's been Probably the two should go hand in hand, I would think, but I don't know the answer to that. But whatever it was before. We need a motion for that. We haven't had any complaints from any neighbors or anything about loud or objection. I've heard complaints about noise, but it was within the noise ordinance in the past year. From, from a neighbor of MOOCs. Mm -hmm. People noise or band noise? Band noise. And do they play? I, I, I don't know. Do they do they play music outside? Yes. Yeah. With that with that outside permit? Yes. But they should have still go to have a live bands. Yeah, I told the person at the time that they needed to call the sheriff's department if they were beyond our noise ordinance hours and they're outside, like being loud. That's great. Okay. What are we thinking? Are we going to motion or no? Motion to approve uh, licensing licenses for Redbox LLC and Vincent on. Oh, I'll try it. I'll call being served after 12 p.m. and the standard letter being sent. Chair is not signing anymore. It's all online. All right. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, what else you got, Rosemary? That's all over my head. Okay. Jason, you're up. Everyone? Good. How are you? You ready for mud season? I don't know if we're gonna have much. Oh, I like oh, to hear. Oh, oh. <laughs> Famous last word. Why did you have the same? Yeah, you're an optimist. I just knocked on wood. You're good. Other than that, uh, truck 19, uh, it was all warranty stuff with our clutch pad, assembly, with the fan belts was not under one thing we had to cover that. We installed it. Uh, and truck 20, uh, we redid uh, the pins and shackle on the wing arm. 
Thank you for that. Where we're at, roughly, and some of the pictures showed the bucket what was worn out somewhat in the pins. And uh, for trainings, uh, Jacob and David have an ultra 10 class coming up on the 30th and the 4th of April. March, April. And David says it's time to do this flight tomorrow. Um, is 4580 tons of sand after? Sand? I mean, percentage wise, are we doing well with sand and salt use? Salt, so we're doing really well. The sand is uh, usually 120 to 130 votes per car per year. We're at 110 votes. It's always about that around this time. Okay. Just wondering whether we're solid really good. Usually it's 400 ton average years. Brian has been talking about it right in 38. So the rest of it will just sort of melt away this summer. Okay. She's right about losing. It's not going to melt this summer. Salt? No, we we filled it up last spring. And okay. Is it? Um, we briefly mentioned the safety grant you're working on. Oh yeah, I didn't want to do it. But yeah, I'm working with Dean on the right for a safety grant for our passive insurance company. I hopefully get a AED and a 50 inch TV screen for the job and training. Right now we have nothing that we have, we have to bear that we don't want to try Maybe it's bad. As long as you're not watching TV. They just watch the weather. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't watch the weather. Jason, okay. what's the status of everybody, all the employees with regard to MTRA trainings, mine safety, um, health administration training? They're doing main. They're doing trainings and get the best year that works for us. And that was one of the reasons I was hoping to get this TV sooner than later because if we get a big enough screen where everybody can see it, they can do it virtual. But right now we have a small screen. Hard to have four or five people staring at that when they are not. Yeah. yeah, the VLCT grant is a really great opportunity. Um, they pay for safety related items in full and they allow for kind of creative uses like the TV to provide more safety trainings. So it's a really good program. I'm glad we're participating in it, in it again. Is that, is that interactive too? I mean, does the TV, do we have a camera looking at our probes? Uh, that's not part of the current setup that we're, there'll be a laptop that has a camera on it that we can use, but the TV itself won't have anything. No, okay. Camera like that, above the TV. Nothing like that. Okay. You had it in here as a discussion with the select board for back old pirates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sent out the invoices for the quotes. I mean, that was in there in case we had questions before, but I think they wanted to get a friendly place. With okay, well, since we're going into planned purchases, let's go to planned purchases. Beautiful transition, Beth. Let's go to planned purchases. Uh, okay, yeah, we see. We have your quotes. Mm -hmm. So what's the scoop? Uh, the scoop, the bigger number, that is the rest of the pins and bushes that go from the top that's in the picture all the way down to the end. Boom. 
and the uh, thousand forty six, and what this bill that will still clean up. And I reached out to Dave, and he got there, and then he noted it. Okay, the bank is going to be done. The total would be around seven thousand minus seven thousand. Um. Is this the only place that we can order these parts for? I'm sorry, through, not for, through. No, at, at, I don't know, at parts because they went 35 on couch. With the open parts and the whole new couch. Yeah. Just the water aftermarket. Okay. That's fair enough. Just asking because we no, have a no. purchasing policy that. Probably a pretty good reason. Yeah. What question do you have? Uh, you know, if we put seven thousand dollars into the back, well, obviously we got to talk to the village about it anyways. But would it be reasonable to keep it for this summer? No matter what, at this point, we're keeping it for the summer. Back was year out. Good deal. Because the back is what a year out. A year. For, for, so whenever we decide whether the back will work there. In the time of the decision, when we place the order, it's a year out. Or I don't know. I gotcha. Okay. Do you have questions, Duncan? Mm -hmm. Do you? So. Shane? Okay. Motion to approve plan purchases as presented. Okay. okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have it. Any other plan purchases, Brian? Nope. You Jason? Got... Do you have anything else on the agenda? Oh, I'm just going to set the page for be here for the water thing. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks, Jason. Uh, next up, the Moyle Valley Rail Trail Working Group updates. <clears throat> we have a list of candidates. I would move that we appoint everyone on this list. Should I repeat the names for the minutes for the? Do you want all the names, Donna? Or do you? Uh, do you guys want them in the minutes? That makes sense, right? It's in the packet. If we approve the names, there's always. Let's read off the names, okay. shall we? Um, Joey Lahulier on behalf of the Johnson Works. So maybe we should actually say Johnson Works rather than Joey's name. Actually, Casey Romero, Allison. Kratzat. I'm probably going to slaughter some names, so apologies in advance. Are you going from back to front? Yeah. Jan <laughs> Gearhart. No, I'm not. I'm one direction. <laughs> BJ Potvain. Kyle Noose. Adrian Stevson. Doug Moldy. And Peggy Williams. I feel like you missed one. I did not. No, I wouldn't talk about Jane it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, I got everybody. That's your motion? That's my motion. But did we have a second? Anything else? Did we have a second? Did second it? Okay, Evan seconding. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, all, like... all those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have it. What do you feel like? Uh, maybe we should see if that group could come in at some point. I feel like with the select board, or do you want to just skip them? I rain on planning. Yeah, I feel like we should um, be clear about our ask of the group and make sure that we're on the same page in terms of expectation setting. Do we want them to bring all decision making functions to us? Do we want them to only bring decisions that mean that are around spending money? Do we want them to propose something like what is our ask? Do we I think we should decide clear. that right now, uh -huh. or do we no. want to decide it when we're doing our master plan? The all the other alternative is that um, we could ask them to present to us what they think their objective could be, and we could discuss following that. I would be open to that as long as they would all be open to feedback. You're open to that. We think, Shane. Uh, my only real uh, vision for this group is that they are coming up with ideas, uh, being proactive, um, being creative, and and hopefully 
you know, looking for ways to fund things that are not just coming to us for money, um, grants and other opportunities. So I think uh, give them leeway and have them come to us when they need our help and we can help them out when they need. Okay, what your thoughts? So you're saying not have them bring a objective back to us and said they can come to us only when they need us, otherwise they have- I'd like to, for there to be communication, but I don't think we need to have too much oversight, essentially. Got it, okay. I think it would be kind of nice for them to meet a couple times and then run run an update by us of what they're working on, what they're thinking. And it, it seems to me that we ought to talk to them quarterly or get a report from them quarterly. That would be my that would be my guess. Okay. If not, if we're not hearing from them before that, I expect we will. I expect mm -hmm. they'll want the money. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I don't like those words. I, I would say the same thing as Mark. Pretty much, um, I think it should be made really clear that they don't have independent authority to apply for grants on behalf of the town. Um, I, you know that that needs to come back to us. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would like to see a general plan presentation kind of thing, like yeah. on a regular cadence, quarter, quarter, later, so yeah, okay, and give them a few months to get their feet on the ground. Are you good with that? Sure, good with that. Okay, okay let's do it. So, <clears throat> Brian, if we could reach out to that group and let them know that congratulations, <laughs> they're yeah. chosen, and uh, that if they uh if you do that reaching out i'll respond to an email if you copy, if you copy me on it how about that sounds good excellent cool okay what yeah i know not for long though evan so don't you worry requesting what uh no should i wonder if we should is we... sue going to join us do we know she was planning on it i haven't spoken to her let's skip that and come back to it Um, I would just propose actually that, sorry, I should have done this at the top. I would propose that we take number two and number three and put them behind number five. So we'll go, um, up next fiber net discussion, then Brownfield and then water creation. Sorry, Jason, but they're not here anyway. And then, uh, remaining appointments. Okay. Adios. Is there any... I'll text you if we have a question for you. Be yeah. Before before Jason leaves, I would have a question. Are, is there a request from Public Works to do digging, installation of water line, et cetera, as part of that project? There is kind of a uh, request, I guess. But there's not really a well, request for water down. There's a suggestion that they may need the help of Public Works to go. Well, yeah. the, the specific request that was made via email was that the public works might have to pick up some brush. Oh, that's true. If, if that's it, are there any reservations? No, yeah. there was only one thing that me and Brian talked about was if they are putting the water line down and across that stream, that's a year around stream that we have from the day the stream. Right, but we they didn't ask for that from the public works anyway. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So, Lamoille Fibernet, Charlotte and Paul, the floor is yours. Can we dim the lights? Yeah. No, they'll just no, turn off in a minute. There's no dim abilities. Uh, there, we, can we can turn, turn them off. on and off. Yeah, we turn every other one off. Yeah. Yeah. There's some dim ability. Well, yeah, like we, we don't have the actual the function lighting sitting in here. Like, see that one? Apple burn, not Burn. We all have the pages anyway, right? We do. Well, I like it. Right here. Yeah, there's a nice, yeah, it's a nice, nice page. 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 Can you reverse that? <laughs> uh, I'm working on it. Uh, okay, can everybody see that? Right? Well, we have, it right, we have it right here, right? 
Just turn them all off. Uh, Let's light it back outside. I like it. Uh, oh my god! Perfect. Thank oh, you, brilliant. Anyway, thank you. That's hilarious. It's okay. So that's the update. <clears throat> slide, I call that way too busy, but uh, only two things I want to pay attention to right here. One on the left, you see all the dots. That's the town of Johnson. Blue means certain. So that's the certain population that's clustered in the village. Orange is undeserved. Red is uncertain. And obviously, you can see if you get farther out of the village, you have less coverage. Obviously, I thought I was up to all those and all the jobs. Um, but what's interesting about this slide is you look at the pie chart and whatever that thing is on the bottom on the right, um, the green slice is the proportion of people in Johnson that are served with 100 over 100, 100 down low speed and 100 up low speed. So think of this. So if you're only doing this downloading movies, you probably don't need 100 up. But if you are working from home, you can make graphics or teaching. Um, how I help me that and stuff. Uh, Functional speed is very important. The percent of population served in Johnson with 100 over 100 is 2%. So, even though we have a reputation of being, you know, already served downtown, not necessarily true in the coming need for the project. And particularly as the housing get more and more affected and all that kind of stuff. So, we think we can mention a lot in Johnson, even right downtown. Where is that upload of 100? Where is the upload of 100? Oh, where are we at in town? Yeah. Who has it? Probably the co op. Co op and probably nobody else. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I assumed as much too. It goes up 100C also. Yeah, it goes that, up 100. But that's not 100. 100 that's not uploaded <clears throat> 100. It's down maybe, but not. It, it's uh, synchronous. Possibly. Yeah, possibly the college. Right. Okay. So how how we're talking about. Paul, how are you defining underserved? Uh, let's go back to that. Underserved is, um, that's really blurry, isn't it? That was like 23 uh, down, seven up or something. Yeah, on the class, uh, unserved, 
I'm not sure if I remember. I think it's 25 degrees. Yeah. Um, that's been added. So one serve, 25 degrees, one serve. Yeah. Big swing, probably the yeah, blue part is, I think, 100 over 20. So that's 20 over 20. And is this accurate? Well, that's a good question. Um, this is a really fairly recent slide, so this should be fairly accurate. Um, one of the things we spent quite a bit of time on was challenging some of the FCC maps uh, because the what they have alluded to is the uh, the maps of how things are served and information is stored by ISPs. Turns out they were a little bit generous. So we were able to, uh, based on a lot of groundwork that our construction manager, David Van Rootwell, did, we were able to challenge all of that. Is, so, which means we have more obvious to the second, which is good. Are there any generalizations as to, like, is, is the blue, you know, Comcast, or are there any, is the, is the orange uh, satellite? And the, well, the, I was wondering this too. Is satellite represented here? Um, as far as the safe concern, satellite that is um, uh, 25, 25 N, I think, they consider that to be the underserved population, which is wireless. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today uh, what we want to talk about is the strand opportunity we have. Again, the DCBD has their own pot of money and they've established a matching program where they will fund dollar for dollar any ARPA money that counts contribute to the broadcast network. There's only a couple of stipulations. Um, you have to spend it in the dollar town, which is good. We like to come out of here. Um, the portion of this pot of money that comes from DCBD that they would take in has to be spent in ways to comply with Act 71. Act 71 is serving the underserved and unserved. So we can't spend every money redoing down that. But we can spend it in the hills where we just all those orange and red dots. Um, the reason we're here today, before we have a the finite plan, the government running fiber down. The streets of Johnson is because there is a deadline. We need to commit to uh, putting money in this program. If you want to get this match, you need to do it Monday first. So the time is at hand. Now, there's a bunch of things we can do uh, with this money. Uh, of course, I'm looking over here on the right. Um, we cover the drop costs. The drop is the distance between the pole and the house. And um, I kind of want to look at like a bunch of you times of that might also see costs in a minute. Um, but we can rewire some affordable housing, so we can rewire this building with our portion of money, not with the ECPB's portion of money. Um, so there's lots of things we can do with it. Um, but I guess the point I want to make on this right side is all the grants that we put that we were eligible for as a CUD is only going to cost the cover about 60%. Of our bill costs. So there's a significant gap to be filled. And grants like this are opportunity to sell to put away at that. Well, that's, that's kind of how we're here. Is there a deadline on when you have to spend this grant money? Well, this is the ARPA money. So we have I, to. You know, but I mean the match. Oh, you know, uh, that's probably ARPA too. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out. Okay. Certainly, the art department is yet obligated to make that. No, that, that I understand. Yeah, that's, I just, um, that's easily done. It will be, it will be more yeah. than area right that. Paul, just for clarification, yeah. you said that it's only the VCBB portion of it that has to be spent on uh, unserved or underserved populations, correct? That's correct. So, if we wanted to, for instance, um, do some Rewiring <laughs> affordable housing in the village, that money could be money we spend, and then the BCB portion would cover other things. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, I put this slide, I don't expect you to really read it, but I put this in just to remind myself to say that uh, this is a statewide program that leads cities and towns, the governor, everybody's encouraging the council to look very carefully. We are on some basis, 
standard hours. So a quick look at a couple of maps. Um, just for orientation, the circle on the bottom is just safe. Um, and you can see a lot of blue down below there, and then it gets uncertain and underserved pretty quickly as you can kind of put your and so on. The south side down, just safe on top now. Again, uh, on the other side, water road and so forth and how unserved. So even you know up to the right there, even not so far in town, there's a lot of underserved uh, population with the strand out of the Statewide, uh, within the water park, I should say, there's at least one other meeting going on tonight. Our spill is the same meeting we're having right now. Um, Cambridge, I think, that last week. Wolf had just met. So has it been. So it's all it's still very concurrent. But statewide, um, a number of towns have already jumped in. And so there's about two and a half million dollars of towns already kicked in through this program. So five million total we spent in this effort. Um, so I think it's it's a really good opportunity for us. So what's the ask? Uh, I'm here to ask that we contribute fifty thousand dollars to our funds into this matching uh, opportunity. So we get hundred thousand spent in town as we so choose uh, with the caveat of that seven one. By the way, a quick example uh, of covering the cost of long drops we were talking about. The drop cost, depending on who you talk to, and since we don't know which ISP provider we're working yet, we don't have an exact cost, but it's somewhere I think we'll have a little I think a little less, probably won't be much more. Um, and let's say the ISP provider has like cable pays for the first 100 feet. So if you have a 400 foot driveway, that means you, the homeowner, have to pay for the other 300 feet. If it's three bucks a foot, that's $900. That's a barrier for a lot of people. The one string of fiber all over the helmet on, and the people can't connect. So it's kind of what, the, this, what this opportunity would allow us to do is help get people connected. And that's, you know, the quality of the outside of how the fiber will place live and development and so forth. Okay. Uh, one of the questions would be how do we allocate this money? Uh, what other towns seem to be doing is creating a committee to either come up with proposals or evaluate proposals or make recommendations. And the money would be held by the CV, and the CV will work with the town to work with the projects that need town goals by the next one. That's kind of what we're proposing. Paul, do we know the total number of square footage that would have to cover those underserved areas? So, sorry, not square, the, the, the footage that we would need to cover. Yeah, so when you say that it's $3 a foot and you're saying that ISPs will cover the first 100 feet from the point of connection to the homeowner, do we know how many total feet we're talking about to get to those underserved homes? We do not. We don't have that information yet. That's not a doubt of the And I would say that 100 foot is an estimate. I think a little more than that, it will be less than that, I don't think. That might be all uh, so these are kind of conceptual arguments. Sure. And then the next question is Is there a plan to do that type of analysis? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, is this? A hundred foot from my phone pole. Yes. Okay, so just look at how close your house is to the phone pole. Yeah, I'm not thinking about my house. I'm, I'm blue. About, <laughs> I'm thinking about. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, right. I mean, the question is good with that. How many people would talk about it? Yeah. Uh, a couple more slides. Yeah. It's very common for your power line to be within one or two of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made a night mistake. Curiosity is about 150. Yes. Yeah. I think that's very common. Um, Probably pretty common for the people who are the red dots to be not very close to a pole. Right. But if they have electricity, it depends on where they're last. Yeah, it depends on how far you're actually running it up. Are you running it on a class four road for an extended period of time? 
where they would consider the connection point to be, you know, 10,000 feet. Yeah, if you're, if you're off, you're thinking that's going to be a different sort of Right. Presumably that analysis could be done relatively easy just using existing information. You know, 911 point data for a house and you know, there there are uh, ArcGIS information on where all the utility poles are. So. Sure, yeah, you can measure every single house and find the pole and measure it. Through it. And that is what I have done. Yeah. yeah but I think it's, it's when we got Comcast, um, a few years ago, you know, they the, the distance that they measured was not like straight line from the pole to our house because they didn't want to run the straight line from the pole to the house. They wanted to run it up the driveway. So you can't just like look at a map and look at the straight line distance. That's a good point. And I, and I, and I think the amount, the distance they would cover was considerably more than 100 feet. And I've seen 250 and 300 feet also, but I didn't want to say that because it's said you know, yeah. any of those, those scenarios, so speak. Yeah. yeah. We, we did have to pay a big chunk of money, but it wasn't anywhere near like $3 a foot. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Well, the other thing is that, like, for my house, the pole that I get, that the internet comes from, is not the same pole that is the closest pole to my electricity, you know, because I have different power coming through my property. So, anyway, the point is there's lots of factors in doing that analysis. Yeah, okay. Sorry, we derailed a bit. Okay, this is a good discussion. Um, so, I mean, what? Pretty simple process. You just send a letter to the CD, uh, specify the amount, you can get tagged on a rubber dollars, uh, if you go to replace uh, funding replacement, if I remember correctly. Um, this is going to be CDD, so I'll make some statement of the market fraud that in there and any conditions you like to add to the fund. So, you might say, for example, if there was a project between now and want to do with some of the thousand dollars, say that yeah. uh, you want to do this project with a portion of our money and the rest of it, we'll talk about the five best way to spend it. So, like that. so uh, I realize I'm presenting some big concepts here in terms of numbers and magnitudes, if you will. So, we'd be happy to come back. Um, we're not going to have the entire town map out in the so, um, so, but I'd be happy to come back here at least to have a game of the town about the new town about our architecture. Um, but we reiterated that you know, we have an opportunity to match the dollar, dollar and the deadline is coming up. So, that's kind of all we have. Are you with me, Evan, on this? You want to live here? Yeah. To, to spend 50000 on ARPA money to get 100%. I think we can discuss it on the board. We are board. We are. Board. Asking, we are board. You're asking me specifically. Oh, um, well, because I like I mean, last time there was a presentation by Val, they were talking. <laughs> there was there was talks about targeting um the village to get up customer base and everything and then do the final in the final mile and I really don't think that model I genuinely agree with. Um so if the board were to approve it, I wouldn't support it unless it was only in the underserved and unserved areas. Can I ask what your what the um rationale behind the fifty thousand number is? Um, sure. Say that again. Right, right. Okay. But also, if I look at the the likely ways to spend money and actually happening, we do have a lot of remote locations here. We could cover substantially a couple of hundred dollars of the location actually. We could also learn how to down here and pick your town and show the floor down. So we try to look at what the problem would be and, and it's a reasonable for you to ask. Uh, $10,000 to better for Johnson, but we wouldn't get much anger. We wouldn't get 10000 back. So you said Cambridge did theirs last week. What did they? Cambridge, uh, they asked for 50000 I don't think they decided that night. So they, that was the answer. Um, Walker, I think the ask was 25,000. And Marshall, I think it's 50,000.
you know, we could ask you more, but I think the President Johnson, and I didn't give a that. I think you have others in my yard as well, or else we don't, you know, I think this would be very significant help to the right side of the do you have any idea what happens? I mean, we're answerable for the ARPA money. Um, what happens if you don't spend it before 2026? We have to give it back? Well, we'll say. Uh, <laughs> That's you know, a guarantee. Yeah, I got a car I can sell you too, but. <laughs> put it aside, you know, something like that. I mean, it would be easy to spend by 2026. I don't see that being an issue at all. I don't want to ask you a question about what happens, but I think I would. Would it be considered spent? What would it? Would it be considered spent on our behalf if we gave it to the CUD as part of our spending? That's a good question, and I, you know, me personally, I'm not ready to. I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't approve the funding. I just don't. I haven't had enough time to think about it, and I, I'd, I'd really like a little bit of time to think about it before making a decision. Pete, personally. I'm not there yet either, but there's three other board members, so I'm the, I'm ready to spend it. I think we're I think the deadline is May first. Yeah, so we got the whole month of April. To... I'm still ready. You to can spend make a it. motion. I'll make a motion that we um, spend fifty thousand dollars of ARPA money <clears throat> to um support the Fiber Network. I'll second. Motion a second. Mm. That's your full motion. Is that does that work for you? What do you What do you worry about? Well, Paul thousand. said you can have stipulations on where the town's portion got spent. Are you just going to give it? I'm going to just, I'm gonna just blow it, it out there. Yeah, I'm to, be it. Spent in Johnson. to be spent in Johnson. To be spent. It is of course to be spent. Has to be Johnson. It. I assume it has to be spent in Johnson. Yes. We'll yeah. want it to be. Better. I'll amend that to say to be spent in Johnson too. But it could be spent Designated on infrastructure or underserved or engineering, engineering or it could be spent in materials. As the as the as the mar as them to apply for this grant and get a match. Yes. Are you with me, Diana? Yeah, you said underserved areas, you mean underserved or unserved, right? Yes. Okay. Can you read back what our motion is, Donna? Uh I think the motion is to um Okay. Designate $50,000 of ARPA funds uh, as matching funds for the oil fiber net to apply for this grant, whatever the name of it is, uh, to be spent in Johnson on unserved or underserved areas. Some wording, something to that effect. I would suggest, Mark, you might want to read out the unserved and underserved. The PCPD part has to be spent for anybody. Keep the Johnson part with a little bit of flexibility here at the sign risk if you want to do it. The CUD will work with you to figure out what's the best green area. Yeah, because you don't know how we're gonna connect. We don't know how we're gonna connect everything. The whole idea of this to start with was to serve the last mile. Okay. You don't want to get behind that. Yeah, but you may we may have to do things that serve the no, let me finish my thought before you interrupt me. Thank you. We may need to we may to serve those underserved areas. We may need to make connections in between, which would allow for the well served areas to be connected to. We shouldn't limit ourselves. I understand what you're saying, but uh, just giving fifty thousand yeah, dollars, they could it. just go through Main Street. They don't even have to target going towards the last time. They can just do a match part would already be. Okay, I'm just gonna say, hold up, hold up, hold up. We can't have two conversations. At once. Well. And what? I might as well vote. Do you want to say something? Um, I would just amend it to take out the underserved and, and unserved. And that's friendly? Yes. Okay. Good, Donna? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay. I have it. Okay. For the presentation. That was good. It was helpful. Thank you. I'm very interested to hear more analysis as you have it too. Interesting to see. Thanks. Um, did you have anything else on Fibernet? I don't know. Okay. Should have came in with 75. 
You got it. Thank you for presenting. Okay. Um, Brownsfield committee resignation and appointment. So uh, Doug Moldy is stepping down as Johnson's representative on the County Planning Commission's uh, Brownfield Committee. Uh, I'm currently the alternate. I'm willing to remain the alternate, but um, I don't think that attending every meeting is a good use of my time. I'd rather remain the alternate when needed than take on the main position. Can you talk a little bit about what the Brownfield purpose? So the Brownfield Committee, uh, its chief function is allocating funds for uh, Brownfield studies and remediation. Uh, it can also have a hand in, there's some technical process about holding a property while it goes through remediation so that the uh, to mitigate the transfer of liability uh, as part of it that they occasionally get involved in, but it's mostly spending money dedicated to brownfield remediation. Um, most of the money gets divided up between kind of everything else and petroleum cleanup. The petroleum cleanup is the pot of money that's the most desirable because there are the most locations that have need for petroleum money. So a decent amount of the time is ends up being spent on kind of everything else. And those are relatively easy to allocate because there's a good amount of funding for it. Um, but yeah, it, it's evaluating and selecting uh, brownfield mitigation projects throughout the county. Yeah. We need the Johnson rep. Okay. Um, I think regardless, we need to accept Doug's resignation. Motion to accept Doug's resignation. Send him a thank you letter. Second. Uh, discussion. Kim. It's a stretch, but I remember being on the planning commission and not having a clue what was being talked about in this realm. And it's, uh, it might be a wonderful thing to throw out to see if anyone on the planning commission might like to be that person because then there would be some kind of overlap of actually what's going on in those plans. Maybe the chair of the planning commission. Or the or. The tree <laughs> okay, well, that's not fair. So, uh, or they, uh, <laughs> that's a good point. Thanks, Kim. Interesting to think about. Typically, once a month for um, about an hour in the afternoons. I don't remember what day of the week they meet. Like, like business hours. Yeah, during business hours. Talk to Doug. Um, okay, so we have a motion on the floor to accept Doug's res resignation. Any other discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. Have it. And we're going to send him a thank you letter. We are. Yep. Um, so, are you owning that thank you letter? Yep. Okay. So I'll post the vacancy. Um, this is kind of on the line of something that we would post in the, uh, in the newspaper. In addition, you know, it doesn't exact, it doesn't have statutory authority, uh, but it is voting on allocation of funds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to advertise it in the news and citizen? Yes. I think that makes sense. Okay. Is there objections? Oh. Seeing none. Okay. Good. Um, and I will also connect with Paul and Planning Commission so we can put a plug in there and find it. I don't know if there might be a member who's interested in serving on both. Maybe the Conservation Commission. Yeah. yeah. Well, limit ourselves. That would be a good fit for the Conservation Commission. Yeah. Yep. So will you extend to both Lois and Paul? It'd be good to get some email anyway, just so they could forward it. Um, I will. Awesome. Okay. On. Um, we have a plan. Sure. We also have a plan for the Wi Fi. We probably need to be reappointed. Yes. Your oh, yeah. appointments are up in April. Yeah, but we have it on our we have it on our thing here, and this is our last meeting before April. 
So we have it in line four, number four. It says and appointments. Oh, so um, we have specific terms that we're. It's annual. Okay. Annual appointments. Uh, yes. So so would just a motion to reappoint uh, Charlotte and Paul? I think so, but I just want to hear what Brian has to say about this. It feels like you're trying to say something. I'm sorry. Uh, the appointments that I was going that were for discussion tonight, I'm sorry, I didn't make it in, was uh, that we are permitted two alternates and we're only currently using one alternate. For the fiber net? Yes. Okay. Um, so we could advertise that and it, the appointment is not due until the end of April. And so Paul we could advertise for it and have time to make the appointments. Paul is our appointment and Charlotte is our, our alternate. I think it might be the other way around. Other other yeah. Things. And you okay? And would you both be interested in staying in those particular positions? I am needing to step down this year. Um, at the very least, I think I'll be switching to all three. All primarily, we need to discuss this. You need to discuss. I it. didn't hear okay. a word you said. She she said <laughs> that she may not be able to continue to serve this year. Um, she may be willing to be an alternate, but not the primary appointment. And Paul needs to consider. Is what I heard. So for those reasons, we probably should just post rather than trying to appoint. Yeah. Okay. Let's post. Okay. Yeah. Tried to sucker me in. <laughs> um, thank you both for serving, by the way, and I hope you both are willing to resubmit your names. Uh, okay. Thanks for bringing that up, Paul. And let's move on to the next item. So we're going to circle back. We're going to go back to water service at Johnson Arboretum and Tree Board Grant. So um, the Johnson Tree Board is seeking a, a permanent water source that they can use for uh, service at the Johnson Arboretum. Um, they've gone through a couple discussions already with the village and have most of a plan in place on uh, how and where that will need to be established. Um, we also have a little bit, little bit of information from the village about the cost associated. Uh, that's on 19. 19. 19. Thank you. Um, so that includes... The water meter and the hookup floor, and the the meter pit and installation, everything that they need there. Um, that does not include, like Jason had mentioned, that there is going to have to be some trenching done uh, in order to run the line itself, um, and it may need to cross a stream, which would require a stream alteration permit. Does it include the piping? No, not beyond the meter itself, which would, the meter and curb stop would be, uh, there would still need to be a, a pretty extensive. So we don't actually know the cost of the project. Not the final cost. Of so this 1560 really is the meter, the, what do you mean? 1210, 12, 12, 10, 10, you mean? 1210 plus 350. Oh, okay. uh -oh. That's really the the vault, the meter, and the meter horn. Yes. Is there a village share of this? No, we haven't. Uh, th this is we haven't asked the village for contributing anything beyond, uh, you know, their regular work on. But we have requested their time. What do you mean by their work on it? You mean their time? This is just direct costs, as far as I can see. This is just materials costs. Thank you. I understand, but I guess the question still is, are we going to be charged by the village for their time? I don't believe so. I can confirm with that. I think that for my understanding for this is that they would be willing to install it. But we don't have an agreed, a whole agreed to package on this yet. Uh, you know, the 
the board wanted to have that opportunity to discuss it first. So, okay, has the tree board approached the village? Yeah, you know? Sue's. If I can lean on you, Sue, you're probably going to be a lot more familiar to, familiar with your conversations with the village than I am. We have lots of conversations with the village, but most recently, Jason has been the person, and I have not been put my. I didn't even know they had this number. I got this just on Friday, so it's pretty recent. Do um, you know what they're aiming for is to put uh, lines that do not go down deep, like maybe 60, because they're not going to be used most of the time. They'll be blown out in the fall. And um, six or seven spigots around the field, what we're aiming for is to try to get a spigot with 100 feet of every tree down there. So we can run towards the spot. And then we won't have to depend on our three guys who have trucks and tanks and the whole thing themselves. Or about it. There's nothing more fun on a 95 tree day than hauling a pocket out of that river. I'm not the thing, walk 400 feet over to that tree over there. The third question was if they were going to charge money for doing the work to do I think that was going to be. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, I don't know. Well, I would make the case for the village um, to take the part of this part. Can you speak up, so? I would make the case for the village to take the part of it because it's in the village, you know, it's on land. And it's a piece of development that really belongs to everybody in the town. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I would imagine the village uh, wants to get paid for their workers for their. I don't think it's the answer. I haven't discussed that aspect of it. But as far as buying the water from them, we already do because we put up the place of the kind of water. So that part would be a change. Right. The monthly water fee. I think that is. The question, correct me if I'm wrong, is if they're going to charge us to install the vault meter and all that. Um, but to me, it sounds like there's a lot of unknowns. This is just getting a meter. It is, is the question, would the select board be supportive of the idea when we get a full cost? Or is it just to support it to get the meter in? Kind of wondering. Well, I think we've First, need approval of, of the concept in general. Um, that that's, I think there's that's more. The asked tonight? Yes. All right. The concept so, of putting water in at the arboretum. Just to be clear, this is about whether or not a group of people should pursue this as a project to figure out the logistics and costs around that project? Yes. Okay. Okay. And is that your understanding too from the trade board side of things? Uh, yes, we, as I said, I spoke with Jason and Nate, but recently Eric Daly has gotten into the conversation and he has been able to do things that I was told last fall were possible. So I'm hopeful that the three of them can work out a workable. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Duncan. I have two questions, and I, they're probably for you, Sue, to think about as you <clears throat> go through this process. Um, will the village, so once, typically once you have a meter installed, the reason they put the meter in is to measure the amount of water you got. Yeah. Um, so under normal, like at my house, you know, I pay about 68 bucks a month for my water, <laughs> which includes the largest part of that is actually the monthly service fee. Uh, the water itself is pretty minimal. It's, you know, 0 0.02 cents a gallon or something like that. So the first question would be, will the village be charging you a monthly fee for the water? And if you're, if you're going to have that, it, it being a seasonal use, typically the village would have to come in and remove the meter in the fall and reinstall the meter in the spring and they charge for that. I think it's I think it's seventy five bucks, but I'm not sure. We have discussed uh, a couple of times the fact that we would blow up the lines and not leave the water in the. No one ever said anything about putting the meter up. 
the meter's got to be removed or it'll freeze. And if it freezes, it breaks, and then they'll charge you for a new meter. Uh, so you you probably don't want to you probably don't want to have that. The meter vault that uh, Eric and Nate are suggesting to use is supposed to be frostproof. Okay. So if I, have <laughs> I never, I never, I never, was. I don't have any experience okay. installing or, or anything. Yeah, back but the people that do know about it tell me that it's frost food. Okay. But I have no personal experience with it. What I can tell you is if the meter freezes and breaks, it'll still be our responsibility. We'll be charged for the meter. Um, so there's that piece. Then the other piece is where do you, do you know where they would be proposing to? come from to provide that service? They're coming off. He didn't, he described it. He didn't say Bill Perkins was lying, but that was where I understood it. It's in there somewhere. Okay. He said they would not have to come off for a bill and they wouldn't have to deal with the fact that it's going to be repaired. So that being a service line, unless the village is planning on taking that over as a water line to the point of the meter, um, somebody's going to need to have a, an agreement or an easement in place with Bill Perkins to be able to both install and repair and replace the line if at some point in time it's needed. Um, so if the village is going to assume that responsibility, they'll need an easement. If they're not, if they're considering that a service line that we're responsible for, then we would need an easement. In other words, Perkins is responsible for that line. So they need to be an easement for use. Yeah. 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 I mean, if we're crossing Bill Perkins' property, you got to have an easement to be able to maintain that one. <laughs> not even that. If we're, even if it's running down the right of way, the Checkerberry, if the line is there, if we're tapping into Bill's line, he's going to want to have the same. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't be tapping. I think we would because I, Duncan, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think his line goes right to the middle of wherever the main is. I think as a landowner, he's responsible from, from the main to from his the house. From the main to his house. Yeah. Or maybe the shutoff. But there used to be, I mean, he used to, Bill had that little uh, building out back there yeah. that used to have water. I don't know if it still does or not. Maybe, maybe that's where they're thinking of tapping in. We should kick it right out of here. I don't know. So it sounds like the, it sounds complicated. <laughs> yeah. I, I would, I would make an offer. I have a, a small water pump. Um, and I would be happy to loan you guys that pump for at least a year. And, and if you could, you know, if we could install hoses or pipelines or whatever to give you taps, we could draw the water right out of the river and it wouldn't cost you anything. Um, Is that a gas water pump? Or a water? It's a gas, it's a gas water pump. And, you know, it'll, I'm sure it would handle, I'm sure it would handle um, filling a tank or, or watering the system. We have talked about a pump. The problem is um, flooding, tampering, uh, all of that stuff. Like yeah. ideally, ideally, in the long run, running it off the water system uh, off the main would be better. So I mean, I think that, okay, here's what I'm hearing happening here. I just hear there's still a lot of questions. So I would suggest that we push this back and say like total project wise, what are we talking about? Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe something that really aggregates all of the different elements of this project. So I agree the, completely, I don't know why they haven't done it. Who? Were they? Um, Jason Nate and Eric uh, well, I would say they're not the owners of this if they're not the ones who are asking for it to begin with. They're the ones who are facilitating discussion, and they should be having those discussions with whoever it belongs to on the tree board side as well. Um, so if you're not part of those discussions, I would insert myself a little bit. 
whomever is heading this up on the tree board side. I don't know who it is. I'm not saying you, I'm just saying somebody. Um, so that whoever that person is, is the one who's driving the discussion, gathering the information and compiling it. Kim? I, I just, I, I know that the art breeder will benefit the town of Johnson as well. And so I, a part of me is I, I'm looking for support. And I feel like some of that support might be able to come through Brian saying, so Eric, what's up with this? And how can the town help facilitate this to get it rolling in any way? I'm just going to speak for myself for a second when I say this, but I feel like this could end up resulting in a lot of cost and a lot of labor from a lot of different people. And I would like to have a better understanding of what that is before I personally would be like, yeah, like go, I'm all for it, go. I'm just not feeling that right now. And I think just bringing those pieces together would help me. Um, I don't know what from, the rest of the board is thinking. For myself, I'm largely with Beth. I'm generally supportive of the idea. Um, I just, there's a lot of unanswered questions and uh, I would want to see some more details fleshed out uh, before really going hold on. I didn't argue with that at all. Thank you. I didn't even know that they had come up with going this far as far as the uh, money that we're talking about. Well, so, you um, yeah. Even the amount of money that they've got in just the materials, I, would, I guess I would encourage you to to continue to think about or rethink the idea of a portable gas pump. I mean, I think it could be elevated to deal with flood issues. Um, you know, I, th I, I think that could be a pretty low cost solution that would give you all the water you need and it's right there and it's free. Um, what's that? So let's do this. Let's table this. Do you mind talking with the tree board or with Sue directly or with somebody else? Sure. So that that yeah. conversation can happen. Yeah, sure. And then we'll, yeah, okay. You had uh, also grant, tree board grant. Let's talk about the grant. I sent in an application on Wednesday and so, um, we're looking for an improvement to the country. We can fix that once we go on. Um, the Virgin Cross Checker Valley, the Vermont Studio Center has a master plan other than the plan they're working on. They're going to do something about the invasives along the river and a walking trail. We can talk about walking trails down there. A uh, bridge would be really swell because. It would provide another access from flow to walk along the river over the bridge and you got to lay them off the other side and then the trail for building. Um, we want to put a handrail on the entrance slope, eight benches with backs, very expensive, hope to go for it. Um, two picnic tables, one of which is ADA compliant, and a new times. And all of these are meant to be permanent installation. Uh, but we're going to trust for nature, which does not be painted or oiled, or the tree wood has to be supplied around. So uh, it will also involve a lot of volunteer work, and the person paying to almost $20,000 in a sincerely hope they do it. It's a really sick of it. And there's no matching funds on this one. No. Um, What's the grant program, sir? AERP Friendship Grant is rural communities. And uh, everything I wrote for, and it truthfully say that most of the people are all the folks that right. are right with that. If it is received. How much public works hours are you asking for? We might ask them to draw uh, the only act. Like, that's the only act right now. Yeah. And I know that the Tree Warden Conservation Commission are closely knit, but he did kind of say that we would look the Conservation Commission in on projects. So sure. have you discussed 
with the Conservation Commission. I know there's a lot of intermingling there, so that's fine. Yeah, I know. Like, there's a lot of representation on both there, but I'm not sure what you want. He said the Conservation that he, Commission he, asked to be involved whenever there was a project on town property. Were they involved? Well, sure. <laughs> so they're right. But, you guys came up with a form, right? So somebody should fill out the form. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. even we get the grants, I don't know for seven or eight years. Well, if just informationally, I think, yeah, to the point, to your point. When the select board hears about something, we recommend to whatever group we're hearing from that we want to make sure the conservation committee is aware. So even though it seems ridiculous to email yourself, the ask is the same. Right. <laughs> In the conservation committee forum. Like I said, okay. I'm sure well, it has. This, the conservation uh, forum. Sure. As long as you talked about it in that forum, cool. And I am glad that you put a lot of work into it and applied for it. It would have been nice to, to know about it before the application was made. I did it, um, but the agenda was full. Um, so you. Town meeting was coming up, and the it's true. Said, mm -hmm. it was I really, honestly, there was no match. I couldn't see why we were there. That was my call. It's true. I'm not saying it wouldn't have been supported. I'm just saying this she did. She did reach out. It's my call. I said, go ahead and put it in. Okay. So you can be mad at me if you'd like. I'm not mad. It's just there's no point in having a process if we're not going to follow it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lois? I just wanted to mention that the Conservation Commission can receive uh, one form and we back on it and we return it back to KC approved. Excellent. Good news. At this point, they're filed in my office. Um, at some point, they're placed down here besides the bottom of the file cabinet. In the office, we can have them down here too. Excellent. Well. Good. Glad to hear it. Okay. Uh, let's move on, shall we? Thank you, Sue. Thanks, for everybody, for your uh, contributions. Um, carryover appointments. Um, So, Ryan, you had posted some things. Let me read down through, actually. Let me kick it off. Uh, let me kick us off, because I'm going to read down through who I think we have outstanding right now. We have a vacant agent to convey real estate appointed position. We have an auditor vacancy, town assessor vacancy, which we will fill when we officially hire assessors. So I think we're okay on that one. I think we already did. Uh, we have at this point. Okay. It's uh, we hadn't on the 8th, but we have since then. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. And then appointments. We have... We got clarity on constables being... Um, voted on last time, so our animal control are our constables. We have a vacancy for green up chair, two, three planning commissions for different terms. Uh, there's a recreation committee vacancy. So all a of those things were posted, weren't they? A development board review. Let me just finish before we. And then the um, Memorial Valley Working Trail Committee I added to a list. Okay. What was the last one? The Memorial Valley Rail Trail I added to the oh. committee list, yeah. So did you post for all of those vacancies? Not for all of them. We posted for the, the posts have gone out for the Planning Commission Conservation with the terms rolling over. Uh, the other ones still need to be made. Oh, they haven't been posted? So yeah. do we have any appointments to make? Uh, just any of the ones that we... The clarifying. Yeah. All right. So can we post them? Yes. All right. I'm supportive of that. We can hear which, which groups you are posting for. Hold on. We're posting for... 
Green Up Day Planning Commission, there's three different terms. Recreation Committee. Development Review Board. Review board. And as I say that, I realize we are supposed to have a historical society, but apparently I don't have a line for a missing. We have a vacant historical society too. You have one vacancy. Oh yeah. My. Let me add a line for that. That's my error. And Beth, with the planning commission appointments, I thought we appointed. We appointed Dave and Kylie, but there was still a seat. Was because Greg wasn't. There were three seats that were up, and the three seats that were up, and I think it was you. You do only have two openings now, right? And I have the other opening. Sorry, I can't stop. This. Okay, here's what I have. Ready? Planning Commission Charlie term expires uh, 2024. Vacant term expires 2024. Vacant term expires 2024. Paul term expires 2024. Kim, term expires 2025. Vacant, term expires 2026. Dave Butler, term expires 26. Kylie Hill, term expires 26. I mean, uh, different this Kim. is a different, different Kim. Kim. Um, we're missing Adrian Stevenson on that list. Um, okay, I don't know which. I'm, I'm not, I am Rob Rodriguez, that's right. Oh, Rob, oh yeah. No, Rob is here. Rob Rod, Rod, Rob Rodriguez is term expiring 2024. So I'm not sure which term Adrian would have been appointed to, but um, and the last time we spoke, Shane was not was going to uh, resign. So yeah, we just need to know whether Adrian is the term expiring in 2024 or 2026. Just appointed. Okay. Yes. We can backtrack on, on whose seat she was replacing. I don't remember what the who had made that initial vacancy off the top of my head. And it's Stevson, right? Yes. So do we need to do anything tonight? I guess not. I'm just looking really quickly. There's a lot of page meeting and all the names are not submitted for the and uh, yeah. They were in they That's were right correct. Now. They were corrected in the minutes. They were corrected in the minutes. They were yeah, part of the initial I vote. I, I Beth and I talked about it and then he went back. Yes, so those are, we're good with those. They were in the original town report and they were in our minutes accordingly. So we're good. Yeah, I originally took it out incorrectly, but then after you sent an email, I realized it was wrong. I just went ahead and corrected that. So the, the version of events is up now should be correct. Okay, I'm sure it is. Yep, we're good. Okay, excellent. That being said, I think that Adrian Stephson, we need to actually vote to a point just in case because I'm not sure that happened. I don't think that happened because it's not. Oh, shoot. Get that on here. We did vote to approve her in earlier this year. Rosemary, you, th you think it's it February? February. She is not in the town report, so we didn't have the town report. Was she wouldn't be? Yeah, I understand, but I just want to make sure that we have her listed because it wasn't in the town report, and 
And I don't remember. I don't think we week. listed her in the yeah, I don't when know we went through it. I think we should have a motion just to make sure that we've got it. I'll make a motion to approve uh to appoint Adrian steps into the uh planning commission term ending in 2026. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I already this. did it, but I okay. Fair enough. Okay. So I still show two vacancies. Which I think is what we that's what we should have. have. Yeah. Okay. We we had two resignations. We should have two vacancies. Good. Both with terms in 2024 ending. Yes. If memory serves me, then you're looking at the list. So, okay. So let's pick this up next time. Um, hopefully, we get some. Let's get a quick deadline. Yeah, yeah we'll get it out immediately. Okay. Um, next up is update on a joint meeting. Okay. So, uh, on packet page twenty, um. Just wanting to try and get, we don't have a date yet, but wanted to give the board some time to talk about uh, topics for the joint meeting. Um, I think we should add a discussion on the back, oh, and a discussion on River Road East. Mm -hmm. I agree. You say River Road East, we talked about the Manchester stormwater stuff. Well, I'm talking about all the stormwater on River Road East. Okay. So we don't we don't have a time the timer. Date. We don't have a time and date yet. But I can share with them with the village trustees of this draft agenda and uh, ask again what time is going to work out for them. Yep. Do we want to have a harbor money discussion? Oh, I might as well throw it on before proposing an agenda. They can say if they don't want to have it. I don't think it hurts to have an ARPA discussion. There is potential overlap. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Specifically in this building. Yep. Let's do it. Potentially. Um, speaking of this building, I actually think we should um also talk about some fixes, repairs. Literally, the place that is public when we walk through the halls has giant cracks and chipped paint, and it's part of the allure. Oh, is that it? Um, <laughs> we're going for the disarray look. Okay. Um. So, municipal building maintenance, maintenance and repairs, something like yeah. that, and efficiencies. I mean, well, well, well. <laughs> well. <laughs> And then how about Duncan and Mark brought to us the uh, wonderful grant programs that we're talking about earlier today. I think you know talking about efficiency of these municipal buildings is definitely worthwhile. Is this part of the study that's going on with BT BTC? It, it is not. Or it's just the building stuff. It's there. just the two garages. Yeah. In and not the lower storage. Uh, the lower storage is not part of that study. Okay. One of the things that we learned today, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but when when I asked about that five hundred thousand dollars for energy efficiency grants, they have there's four actual program areas, one of which I think Lois mentioned the four thousand dollars kind of the mini grant for planning. That's an automatic. That's an yeah. That's just a freebie. That's like you apply you apply for it and you get it. Um, so that four thousand dollars could give us some study money. Yeah. Um, then there is uh, two types of energy efficiency evaluations. Whether one is one is more like an audit, an actual energy audit. One is more like a simple evaluation. But in order to qualify for the five hundred thousand dollars, if I understood it correctly, we would have to do one or the other of those. Evaluations or energy audits. Gotcha. To qualify. Yeah, they have, they're actually bringing on employees. So who conduct have, those audits? They don't have to search the world over right. for some contractor that may or may not do it unless they get the work. Good point. 
That's important. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, so perhaps that is a good discussion. Yeah, I think it's a very worthwhile the joint meeting. Yeah. It's a There's okay. Free money that you can put into so, work so we have condition and future plans for Old Mill Park, condition and future plans for lower storage, merger discussion, BACO, River Road East, water drainage, ARPA, municipal building maintenance and repairs, and shared building energy efficiencies. What did you say about Old Mill Park? Old Mill House. Old, old Mill House. Oh, house. I, I, Sorry. I, I, old Mill park. I didn't mean I didn't mean park on that house. Yeah. Um, I should take it. You had back out. Yeah. And River Road East. Yep. She did. Sorry. I was stuck on well, that one word. You're yeah, trying to everything. I call on figures. I can tell. Gigi had her hand up. Yes. Oh, I just wanted, I was at that meeting also today, and I had the information about the, um, I grabbed the card. So I'm happy to give that to you, um, Brian, if that would help. That would be terrific. Can I grab a picture? And then you can have oh. it right back. Do you want to do it now? Yeah, I just kind of, yeah. yeah. I will keep going while I take pictures. I actually grabbed all of the information that was available, so. Somehow I'm not surprised. I don't know if there's a QR code and everything. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, okay, cool. Um, update. Oh, no, we just did that. Well anything else on joint meeting before we close that topic? Let's okay. Okay. It'll already be four hours. It will already be four hours. We'll give them all 30 minutes. There's nothing from a planning Eight commission hours. side, since you're here and triggering my brain. There's nothing from a planning commission side that would be needed for a joint village town. We may approach them to convert yourself back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No problem. Okay. NEM service station tax exemption. So the NEMS building uh, has been tax exempt as allowed by 32 BSA subsection 3840 since uh, 2012. Um, so that has expired. Uh, it was up to a maximum of 10 years. Because it was passed in September, are they still tax exempt for the first quarterly payment? First two quarterly payments? Uh, I would ask our tax the, collector. Um, the tax year. Tax year. Everything is appraised as of the first. It's tax year. Okay. Oh, yeah. So does that carry them through 2023? On the listed card, it says through 331.23. Okay. I would move we continue there. We're not allowed. To. I don't think we can do that. Who has to do that? Uh, it has to be a town vote. vote. And it can only be a maximum. After the first 10 years, it can only do five year increments thereafter. I would almost think that this should be a town meeting. I think Masonic Temples is due next year as well. Well, we've always done we've always done them at town meeting, so presumably that we could get NEMS on a town meeting schedule. The board would be here. And we should. We must have had a special meeting. To, this was a special. It was a special meeting. Yeah, that would be wild. Right. <laughs> we have seen. We got what? Well, so we one the meeting last night. Okay. Throw in no pumping or something. So yeah, go ahead, Duncan. Well, Rosemary, one of the questions um, that wasn't entirely clear to me is under under the new law, the town can only exempt the municipal tax portion of the bill. Were they paying the school tax portion of the bill? Or did we exempt that as well? But you're not allowed to do that anymore. Well, you you can, but the town has to, has to pay it. So... We're the uh, only town that did this, by the way. No, we. I was told we're the only town that they contract with that provided exemption. But ne but the building is only in one place. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but they have other buildings. That's not true. They have buildings in Newport, and they're looking at putting a building 
somewhere else. Well, I don't know if we're in the service. That's one in our district. Yeah. Yes. Back when they did it, it kind of made sense. But the fact that the town would be on the hook for the educational tax either way, it they, doesn't make do sense. Do they still want tax exempt? I mean, or are they it. willing to pay tax? <laughs> he said they'll take it, but I think they're willing to. We say that they're not exempt and they have to, right? So if they, not much if choice they pay, in the matter. Raise their fee to us. If they pay the tax, then all five municipalities are going to pay a prorated right. portion of the property tax. That was the yeah. point that was made. The point is That's that we would share right. more equitably if we did collect the tax because the payment would be distributed. Yeah. Right. But it would still essentially cost the taxpayers money. At a lower rate in theory because it's distributed across multiple towns. It costs the taxpayers less. Right. Quite because a, we're quite not a bit less taking in revenue. We've been paying school tax. Yeah. Huh? Quite a bit less because oh, we yeah. have been paying the school tax portion. What tenants do they serve? They serve so they weren't paying the school tax in 2012. If I if I understood what you just said, we exempted them from both the municipal and the school tax. Right. But now we can only do municipal. Well, no, back then we back then the rules were the same. Uh, I believe. Mm -hmm. So so we ended up we ended up exempting them from both. And the town paid the school tax. And it, it, nobody paid nobody paid the municipal tax portion. We we simply lost out on that revenue. We lost revenue and paid school tax. And we lost wow. revenue and paid the school tax. That was a really bad deal for ten years. Well, and, uh, and Rose makes we actually go to check for the state for their school tax. That's not the one. Yeah. No. Okay. So no, that's no. how I was reading. But we have to add it to our tax rate. Right. Oh, okay. right. Our, yeah, we don't actually cut a check, but it gets added. It gets added as additional tax that we have to pay. Yeah. So we we gotcha. we essentially paid the tax. For we have this other so is there anything we can we we can't act on this anyway? No. Is there anything to talk about? Did we get a specific request from NEMS yeah. to? Yeah, exempt. they did. They asked us if they said that the exception is up at the end of the month and would we talk about it, discuss, yes. At the time, I didn't realize that we couldn't make a decision on it, but yeah, we were asked. But not making a decision is making a decision, which I, yeah, which I agree with. Well, the only choice we would really you have would be to warn a special town meeting. Yeah, and but, or put, we could put the question out there. So, did the law change that you would pay school tax and only be able to exempt the municipal tax? I got a little lost between the two of you. Well, that was yeah with uh, that act. X sixty. Mm -hmm. State wants all the money. Yeah. Yeah. Mark was serving when they established a statewide the property, property tax. tax. Yeah, that's okay. when they re removed the ability of the towns. To exempt the school portion of it. Right. But wasn't this done in 2012? Wouldn't that have been after Act 6? It would have been after Act 6. All right. So See, it must have been something more recent than that that changed the I'm law. Does it doesn't matter? I, well, it does to me because if we can exempt the school tax and yeah. the best, no, we can't. The boulders have to do it either way. Right. But if we can. The voters chose to exempt all taxes. Do we want a special? It would time save them money. No, I just want to bring it up next town meeting. I'm inclined not to, you know, to put them back on the tax roll for this year. And if they really want it, I think they had an affirmative. You can't tell me that somebody didn't know that they had a 10 year tax exemption. No, I think they did know. Yeah. And they should have known that, you know, that had to be decided by the voters. If if not, they should have asked somebody. Um, so I, I'm inclined to, if they really want it, we'll put it on the, uh, you know, put it on as a, as an, an article in next year's town, town meeting. Okay. 
So put it on them. If they they should make the request in December. They should make the request. Okay, so we have okay, we have consensus that no one wants a special town meeting for this, and that everyone be open to potentially talking about it for next town meeting, and we'll push it back to NEMS and let them know. Okay, fair, fine. Let's yeah, do it. personally, I'm not in favor of exempting the school portion. I I could, you know, as a voter, I could probably go for the municipal part. Yeah. Like, well, it's the school portion that would save us money. Let's, let's oh, yeah, let's move on, shall we? Animal control officer review. Like, literally. Give me one second to catch up my notes up from the last yeah, second. I did it by tax. We bring in $2,800 of revenue, but our portion of the school would be about $3,400. We lose $600. Okay. Okay. I think. So uh, for the animal control officer review, I sent you an email with a letter of interest that had been submitted to us by a resident, Crystal Earl, uh, who has some pretty extensive experience working with animals, especially dogs, and uh, would like us to consider appointing her as an additional animal control officer. Um, we do have two animal control officers. We've had... Uh, the highest we've ever had was three. Um, you know, right now, Dean is doing the bulk of the calls. Uh, just because of circumstance, Dean is more likely to have time available than uh, than BJ or Tracy. Uh, Tracy's no longer serving. Um, so it would probably, it would be helpful to have an additional person serving in that role. So the board should consider it. Okay. And Crystal's here. Yes. Yep. Hi, Crystal. Um, is there anything you want to add, Crystal? Just that my availability is, you know, it's right there. I mean, my phone is all at work, take down the ASU and work, that kind of thing, work on the phone stop, deal with whatever the issue is. Okay. My availability is critical. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have questions for Crystal? Have, have you familiarized yourself with the town's animal control ordinance? Somewhat. I have it pulled up on my phone. I have been in the process of reading it, and I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. And one of the things that animal control officers are sometimes asked to do is actually issue tickets for violations of. Um, and so she'd have to, uh, are there any specific requirements to, for training to get on the Judicial Bureau's list of authorized people to issue tickets? I don't. You know, we have to fill a form out and send it. What's that? We have to fill a form out and send it to Just, the just basically sending a form out? Okay. There is a, there is an animal control officer training through the league that I think we would want to recommend if yeah. we proceed. Have we ever issued a ticket before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, would you have any qualms about, I mean, you know, one of the things is the village has, I mean, the town has a leash law. Um, okay. And I mean, are there anything, is there anything in the ordinance that you've seen so far that would give you any qualms about issuing a ticket for a violation of the of the ordinance? Okay. I, do we have a leash law, Duncan, or do we have a law that said, I was talking to Dean about this, they have to be under the control. It has to be under your control. Yeah. yeah, so that's not actually on a leash. Not necessarily. That's true. Um, I guess one other thing I'd like to bring up you might be asked to uh, collect a dog in a dog bite case, and that dog could be ordered to be destroyed. Would you have a, a problem with that? Okay. No, no, certainly not. Okay. Uh, yeah, Crystal, I just wanted to ask um, a kind of hypothetical scenario uh, where, let's say, you have to go into a dog bite situation 
Um, you don't have a whole lot of information going into it other than that there was a dog bite, uh, a fight between two dogs, and now you have to go in there and, and figure out that situation. Can you kind of talk about how, uh, how you would approach that? Um, well, it would depend on the scenario. I mean, it's the one that was bit, you know, okay, why is it deceased? You know, how was the other, how were the dogs acting when I walked in there? You know, I understand that there are homes where they're, they're going to protect their home. So if somebody strange walking up on my doorstep, my dogs go off. They sound off. Would they bite? They not. Want a question on occasion, but she's never bit. She's never outside unattended. Um, but it would depend on the situation that I'm walking into. I mean, if they're still well in an uproar and the dogs are still squabbling and they're still in the middle of the fight, then I'm going to handle that differently than I would if they're going back to their own homes or at the vets and, you know, being treated. I have to get all the information before I could really make a decision on anything. Let's say there still is a conflict ongoing. Uh, how would you go about trying to mediate that um, between not just dogs, but people? Well, with the people, the good thing with me is where I go, my husband goes. My husband could most likely get the people to calm down, where then I could pay my attention to the animals themselves and trying to figure out, you know, the best scenario about how to get them broken up. If you're talking a little, say, 10, 20 pound dog versus 80, 90 pound dog, I'm going to handle that different than I would if it's the same size dog. And then that would bring me to a question do you, would there be tools supplied by the town to use in case of that situation or in case of an aggressive dog? There are some safety tools that we have that the officers we'll have to share. We don't have enough equipment for everybody to have it and take it home with them. So being forewarned helps a lot because you will know what you need to bring with you to a case. But, uh, Sometimes you don't get a lot of information from the people when they call just that there's an issue and, you know, I would need to go out. That That's true. You know, that the, there very well could be a case where you would be going in and uh, you might go into a situation that was not what you expected it to be. That where it was coming to, you know, I have to step back, look at the entire situation, you know, see how many other people are around, see if we get the people themselves to calm down and be like, look, well, let's give the scalp, let's give them a harm. Let's get these animals to the vet where they can be treated. I just want to offer a thought about going into a dangerous situation. We don't expect our employees to go into dangerous situations. So if, if you have any feeling at all that you going into a dangerous situation, you mentioned having your husband there. That frankly gives me a little bit of heartburn because your husband is not an employee um, or a public official in the town of Johnson. So that's, that's a liability issue for us um, and your husband. Um, and it's a lawsuit in the making, candidly. Um, so I would be a lot happier, personally, if you have any qualms or concerns about going into a situation that you're unsure about, would be to call the Moyle County Sheriff's Department and ask for an officer to be present um, while you went to the property to sort out the issues. That, to me, is the way we should be handling that. Not, yeah. you know, not. I, I understand what you're saying about your husband, but. It puts us in a real liability situation um, and put your put your husband in the crossfire and we don't want anybody getting hurt. Um, so um, I don't need to, no. I do have a question about like whenever we have a situation, we do need written reports and we do need to be able to file those written reports. Do you have any concerns about? the written aspect of filing um, reports 
around the situation. How long have you been doing that for fishing game? This is my fifth year. Okay. 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 Any other questions? Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was helpful. Yes. Where you're welcome. Um, we will, do we typically like, what do we typically do in this case? So if you're interested in appointing Crystal, uh, kind of the, the process for that would be to consider making the appointment on the condition of a successful background check. Do, but is this like interviewing somebody where we can discuss? Yes, we can. I think we should okay. discuss in an executive session, right? Yep. Um, okay. Didn't warn an executive session, but I think it probably falls into this. So Thank you. we could add it at the end and be in contact. Yeah, let's do that. That'd be okay. With um, you? So we'll follow up with you, Crystal, okay. and let you know either way. Okay. Uh, and we'll add an executive session on the end of our agenda to discuss. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thanks, uh, Crystal. I'll be in touch. Next up, we have economic development roundtable discussion. Yep. All right, finding my place here. It's still time. It's on packet page 23. Um, so uh, that's the discussion is ongoing about um, bringing folks in for the Economic Development Roundtable. I was able to make contact with Vermont Council on Rural Development. And they've offered uh, their assistance with planning and uh, hosting the meeting. Uh, and I've just gotten started with them. So I don't have any real further updates, but we're, we're ongoing. Um, and this and is- they know the list of participants? Say again? Are they aware of the list of participants? Yes. Okay. I, that was part of our an earlier discussion I had with them about who all we'd invited. Um, we might expand that again once we're a little bit firmer about topics and things. But okay, um, April's right around the corner. Yes. Are they committing to an April or are they not? They are not. What are they saying? Uh, we've had a couple of discussions that the, that this might slip to early May instead of end of April. Okay. Thoughts, questions, concerns? I'm surprised if it didn't. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Point, it has to. <clears throat> I think that's good. Okay, let's keep this one on our agenda so we get updates regularly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's not wait for an agenda. Let's get updates regularly. We just can't respond to them. Sure. Okay, cool. Next up is the Northern Borders. All right, next piece. The so Northern Borders Regional Commission has posted another update. Uh, not another one since what I sent you on Friday, but we've been waiting on them to post some of the rules. They posted a very they posted a timeline that didn't really include any of the rules first. And then on Friday, they filled that in with what some of the rules look like and when training sessions are going to be available uh, for the different states to apply. Uh, so the, this program is, is coming together pretty quickly. Important dates that we need right now. Uh, we need to send a letter of interest by April 21st. Uh, that's our, our big drop dead deadline. Walking backwards, we have, um, yeah, the materials are available now, and we have uh, training sessions for more details beginning on, on Monday, April 3rd. Uh, some years they've added additional training sessions, uh, but with this going virtual now, I'm not sure if they will or not. Is that required? It is not required, it's highly recommended. Um, 
you know, I think it would probably be worthwhile to get, you know, a select board member or or somebody besides just myself to attend that training too. So if anybody wants to volunteer for that, uh, that's a week from two weeks from next Monday, two weeks from today, April third. Yes, it's yeah. not next Monday; the following Monday, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, it's a select board meeting day. Yeah, yep. it is a select board meeting day. It doesn't help me. I have a job. <laughs> so, uh, a little reminder about the program overall. Uh, the This is for grants up to half a million dollars uh, that can be spent on infrastructure development that will have an economic impact. Uh, economic impact. Thank you. Um, it requires a 50% match. One of the things that makes this program a little bit more flexible is even though it is federal dollars, it can be used as matching funds for other federal programs in ways that are not normally allowed. So it's not, it still comes with strings, but it's not as restricted as most other federal programs are. But it, it will require a 50% cash match that we should be prepared for. Um, I assume this training is free. Training is free. So I'll probably register for it, even if I can't attend. I don't know if I can or not. I assume that they'll send a meeting link out afterward if it's recorded. Typically. So it's one of the things I did at the ARPA meeting today was talk with uh, Tate Brooks, who's involved with the, with the Northern Borders Regional. And I also had a conversation with Pat Ripley a little bit. I think I heard Pat say that even though it says five hundred thousand dollars in here, the potential is up to three million um, for grants, um, and up to thirty percent of the fifty percent match can come from ARPA funding, which leaves twenty percent town match, um, or it can also be if if we got a state grant that was eligible, um, or I could pay. 20% of the matching fund toward our operational expense. Yeah, that might be tough, but um, but that's another you know. a portion, a portion if, we, if we really could move money like that, I would be able to know. Yeah. Well, you'd have to document a force account, labor, um, labor and materials. Yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. Like there are uh, the EDA, the Economic Development Authority, uh, often cooperates for partial matching funds also. So there, there are other opportunities and Could Duncan's 100% right that this year they have made allowances for even larger grants. Um, and I'm not far enough through their rule book yet to know all the details about what need what you need to do to qualify for above $500,000. $500,000 was the the original limit, and it's still described as the limit, but there's something in there about going beyond that for certain projects. And another thing Johnson has going for it is we are in an enterprise zone yep. right. um, for the Northern Portage region. So that I don't know how that works in terms of the application, but it gives us points. In there, uh, they lay out the rubric, the scoring rubric that they use for projects. And yeah, being an economic opportunity zone is listed as one of the things that accumulates points. All right, cool. So it's a heavy lift, but there's a lot, a lot available. What do we need to do to prep to prep to, prep to submit an application? These applications are in by invite only on June 2nd, but what does it mean to actually submit an application? An application, uh, I'll pull a little bit more of the details on what that is out of the, the entire rule book, but uh, the, we're allowed to be a little bit loose on, in our letter of intent, we have to describe the project, what we think it's going to cost, what we're planning on. We're pretty well prepared for that with the information that we already have. Mm -hmm. For the final application, we'll need Mumley's report 
uh, in order to make it a real application. Is that the only thing that we are talking about submitting for? Currently, that's the only thing I'm aware of that we have planned for submission. Uh, this is another one where it might be worth it to talk to LCPC about uh, administration and support that this could, you know, especially if we start talking about combining it with multiple grants, it could get pretty burdensome. Yeah. We need our community economic development coordinator. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. <clears throat> okay. All right. Could the CUD stuff fall into this, the uh, mouse fiber net? <clears throat> I don't know. know. I haven't because that in theory could be infrastructure. Yeah. Economic development. Yeah. Has the oil fiber talked about northern borders at all? Okay. All right. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, I actually that the CUD would be a political subdivision of the state, so I think they would. Yeah, eligible applicant. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it wouldn't be something the town would apply for. It's right? not town. It yeah. Might consider it as a funding opportunity. Anything else on northern borders that anyone has? Next sure. slide. Drop, drop dead. Letter of interest due April 21st. Yes. Yeah, that's the big date that we've got on the calendar for right now is we've got to, you know, have a, even if we haven't lined up all of the fun, all of our side of the funding, we've got to have a pretty good idea that we, we will, some ideas about how we're going to do that. I think we need to start drafting that letter now, Brian. Yep. Yeah, I would I would strongly encourage you to work with which I'm sure you're going to do anyway with Pat Ripley and um, because the other one of the other things that this guy Tate Brooks said is we need to make absolutely sure that this project is on the priority list for Luella County and Pat assured me that it was, um, but yep, we should make absolutely sure. Okay. All right. Wasn't there somebody who had responsibility for Vermont to name this is some of the stuff? For the northern borders the northern contact, border you mean? Borders, yeah. There but is a. To the contact, I, I can't either, but there is, each state has at least one director. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm looking through what I have printed, but yeah, the the, the whole package is a lot larger than what I printed for us tonight. And it's probably just in a different part. Oh, it's um Christy Farm Okay. Thank you, Lois. Okay, continuing the ARPA discussion. All right. Uh, so there were two parts of this. One was, uh, you know, that we there was the uh, the meeting today about ARPA funds and and our opportunities there, uh, and we sent a couple members to go to go to that meeting and and report back. Uh, we also wanted to discuss about the possibility of forming a new subcommittee to focus on ARPA. Um, I think we've mostly gotten a pretty good update from our members who attended the meeting this morning. So if everybody's satisfied with that, um, there's been some discussion about, you know, do we want to uh, 
keep this at the board level or do you want to panel a kind of smaller group to stay more focused on this? Well, um, I don't care how we proceed. I'll support whatever the board wants to do. That being said, I have serious concerns about our bandwidth, very specifically my own, but all ours collectively uh, on all things ARPA. And also, I think that we have a whole bunch of people in various groups around the town that we should be utilizing. And I don't mean could, I mean should, I think we should be utilizing um, to help with some of these ARPA discussions. Um, and I, I think, sorry, I just want to look at my notes because I've sent you guys so many emails, I'm not going to find it. I think people like um, Planning Commission, they're working on town report. It matters that we're in alignment. Um, when we're talking about, um, well, fiber net two, it matters that we're in alignment. I'm not sure we have to talk about that quite so much now. Um, but basically, we have a whole bunch of appointed people throughout the town um, who are very smart people. And I just want to make sure that we can divide and conquer. And I'm not saying we should have a big working group. That's not what I mean. Because I don't think actually we can move quickly with a lot of opinion in the same room. But I do think there are probably some ways that we can create smaller subgroups and be more effective on idea gathering and bringing it back. I'm not suggesting these subgroups make decisions necessarily, um, but more consider ideas and possibilities and help support the effort so that we're the best informed we can be with while utilizing people in town who make a difference, frankly. Um, so me being kind of preachy, but that's kind of my thought on ARPA. I, very much worry that if it's just up to us to continue to drive things, we're doing a disjustice to ourselves and the town at large. So, differing opinions, welcome. <laughs> I, I tend to agree with that, and I also think that we would benefit from an outside perspective as well, and that's where I believe we've talked about in the past, this economic development position being in large part at right at least right now helping us spend the ARPA money in an effective way. Um and I I really think we would benefit from having somebody outside of the town taking a look at our challenges, our opportunities, and helping us make intelligent decisions. By someone outside of the town, do you have anything in mind specifically? I mean, I don't. I, I think, uh, you know, part of that is we, we have, to have, have to have the discussion of, you know, do we hire someone full time or not full time, but hire someone to focus on us? Do we contract with someone? Do we look at a firm with more institutional resources? I think these are all kind of questions that we as a board are going to have to answer. Um, but I think we would be kind of putting the cart before the horse um, if we go too far down this road without having uh, someone like that to sort of guide the discussion. Okay. I'll chip in because I sent out an email. Um, I have two two basic concerns. Um, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, what we'll learn today, if we are able to uh, relieve ourselves from some degree of the time constraints by spending down the apple money uh, according to a budget process. I think that takes away some of the angst that we might all, you you know, you've heard me for the past several months saying time's running out, people, we got to do something. Um, and I'm, I'm still there. So, so that, you know, that piece, I think to me was really interesting and good news today. Um, and potentially relieves a lot of concern over that. Um, having said that, I, I'm not opposed to the idea of having a committee 
but we've already done a survey. We've already done a couple of public meetings, and I don't want to set up a situation where the general public is under the impression that if we convene this committee, we're just going to take those recommendations and run with it. At the end of the day, right, right or otherwise, it's the select board that makes the decisions on how the ARPA funds are spent. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if we do it, I really want to be clear at the outset with the committee and the members of the public, whatever, that it's great, you know, to have some thoughts and ideas, but at the end of the day, we may not agree with those ideas or support those ideas. Sure. Um, to your idea of timelines, I haven't seen a situation yet where you could be in a committee and save time. Yeah, it's just, I'm sorry, I just haven't ever seen it. Um, and the third thing is, you know, sort of supporting what Shane said, I don't, if, if we do go the road of either, whether we hire an economic development coordinator ourselves, whether we hire a consultant, I don't want to have the group be working at cross purposes. And my idea for hiring someone would be that that would be priority number one of that person help us come up with ways to spend the ARPA funds, you know, wisely. Um, and, I, and I think Duncan, after go, I have never witnessed anything like I saw today. The, there was a, all these commissioners were sitting there saying, help us spend money. Essentially. Basically, they, they had the money looking to spend it. And I mean, Department of Libraries was there saying, We've got sixty million dollars for library capital projects. So there's it's just unimaginable amount of not even just ARPA money, but there's you know the Inflation Reduction Act money. There's just a huge amount of money sloshing around that um I I you know I divert from whether we appoint a committee or not, but we need help with it because there's so much opportunity out there. You know, um, housing and community development's got you know, fifty million dollars. You know, it's just a ton of money out there for lots, lots of different things, and we need them. Um, I think I agree with you about that. The board can't, we can't manage all these, all these different agencies trying to give us money. We it's just more than more than we can pull off. So. Some amount of input from the community, the survey and stuff is important, but I think we can. I don't think we can make our decisions other than what we've already learned. Let's use that money for ongoing expenses so that it really frees it up from the deadlines. If that's really a possibility, I think that's it seems yeah. almost obvious that that's the way we should go. What are the unintended consequences of that? That's a very good question. That's what I was trying to think through earlier. Of what spending the money using um, the Apple funds to operational and then offsetting. Um, I can tell you my chief concern on this is if we recover the money, if we use the money to offset current expenses that frees up money from our general budget. Towns aren't allowed to carry a surplus. Right, we have to apply it to something. Right. So we could apply it to a reserve fund. We don't currently have a reserve fund that would be applicable to this. Or we'd have to do something with it. But we can't just hold cash that right. doesn't have strings attached to it. Well, we can, we can carry over a surplus. And we can explain to the voters. I, I agree with you that you can't you can't just create a slush fund. Um, but if we if we were to put that money yeah. in a fund and say to the voters, we got you know six hundred thousand dollars here that we're planning to use, you know, for infrastructure projects or whatever. That's yeah, that's certainly doable. Yeah, it doesn't have to go into one of our current reserve funds. Right. It can be a very specialized fund that gives us yeah. more freedom and is not yeah. refilled in the same way. So you're not you're not necessarily talking a reserve fund. You're talking 
dedicate allocated money. I'm talking maybe. like dedicated funds. We carry maybe money for three or four years. Yeah. Highway is we can carry yeah. money. We can. Does this change our revenue and our doesn't change like the way we would be it doesn't change the way we calculate anything at a state level in terms of our towns. Okay, sorry, I'm not articulating what I'm thinking, but if we have this large amount of revenue coming in, it makes us a more rich town in theory, right? Practically, we know it doesn't actually make us that much more rich, but it's a good chunk of our operating budget. If we took that much revenue in, how does that placement change us when we talk about um, Johnson as it relates to something? There was something that put us in a bad position recently because of the college making, because of the pilot money um, and it making us look like we didn't qualify for some for oh, something. This was the talking about what Dan was talking about. Yeah, the yes. underserved communities that yeah. they were looking at and how we didn't qualify for that. That's a really good example because most of the time, most of the programs are determined by your annual budget about you know the size of your town, what your capacity is expected to be. You know, they mostly decide that based on your budget. That wasn't just on budget. They looked at some other criteria uh, that we hadn't anticipated them looking at for a project like that. So it could be at some point, we want to apply for something that looks at what's the total of all your reserves. Um, I'm not aware of anything like that right now, but it could be. And like the school rate right, is the Act 46 stuff is all based on property, as, you know, property, grandless property. As as well. So that's probably not. And there's other things that are based on income of the community. So that's probably not. But like, I just am thinking about, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I strongly suggest that we communicate with Katie Buckley and report back. You know, I'm I'm not ready to sit here tonight. The, the deputy of the agency of administration said publicly well that we could do this but he also he said, said that we should talk with katie buckley because yeah, she's been working true. directly with the feds and no matter what we have and until the, the end of next year though. here's the thing whoever we talk to their objectives are different than our objectives what they're protecting is different than what we're protecting and if we're talking about somebody who's work, who needs to support towns in administering funds for a specific purpose, and in this case, ARPA, like their objective is all ARPA based. They're not thinking about everything beyond ARPA. You know what I mean? I do. I honestly, I'm I'm trying to sit here and think, and we should we should consider your question carefully. Um, the thing that occurs to me though is the deadline of being able to spend the money by 26. I yep. I, I that's a real that's a real problem because there's just gonna be, you know, even if we come up with a project, then you gotta hire somebody to do the work and it's gotta be done by the end of calendar year 26. And uh, yeah, I'm just not personally ready to jump into a solution of applying money to our operational budget because we could do that late. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're using it to offset expense, it can't be that late because well, it's, it's be a pit of our by, budget. By 2024. Right? Right. It has to be committed by 2024 and spent by 2026. So we could do it for our 2025 or 2026 budget where we pay the sheriff's department. I think, no, I think it's got to be done by 2024. It's going to be committed by then. I think so. That's right. That's so she's saying we can spend it. Saying we could commit it to our 2025 budget. Yeah. As far as the committee, I I don't know we're there. But a lot of good information and I would like to know some answers. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna talk to Katie Buckley. I think Duncan and I talked about coordinating on that a little bit. Would you like to invite her to a future meeting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She can even zoom in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
She probably would. Make it when the community pizza up and open. <laughs> then we might get her in first. We, we could have the her. meeting that over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. It's kind of selling out getting the pizza from the maple. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, okay. Do we have anything else in the ARPA discussion? I think we're good. I think so too. So let's try to get her in if we could. Either April meeting, if we need to space out time for her, even our priority meeting, I think that's worth the time. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that, yeah, might very well might have some impacts on our priority discussion. So, awesome. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up is the agenda item of executive session. Let's talk about it in terms of the animal control officer review first. Which one is that? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, that I'm, is, I think, A3. A3. I think A3 is personnel and appointments. Discuss personnel appointments? Yep. I'm, I'm looking it up. Oh. Yeah. I think all right. Because three is like personnel. Right? Yeah. Thank you all for coming. You yeah, don't have to it's leave. It's great to have a crowd. Yeah. It's because town meeting. Well, you can come back after. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I'll wait till you make a motion. Never. <laughs> hey, go ahead. So I can so I'll try and get in touch with you uh, in the next few days. Okay. okay. Hey, hey. Thank you. What? What? Please. Oh, yeah, it's A3, right? Go ahead. A motion to enter into executive session as allowed by 1BSA 313A3 to discuss uh, appointment or employment of a town officer. Okay. Do you have a second? Second. Do you have a second? Any discussion? All this I'll all. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, have it. We are in executive session at 901. So Way behind schedule. I motion to appoint Crystal Earl, the animal control officer, for a six month probation in contingent on background check and completion of animal control training through VLTC. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hmm. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, ayes have it. Second to do it. Um, can we get a motion to go into the next executive session? Can I ask a question before we go into executive session? Sure. With regard to our other prior appointments, I know that Brian provided us a bit of minutes indicating that we had appointed the other animal control officers as constables. Do you know off the top of your head what the term of that appointment is? Does that does that end with last town meeting or I'm not sure. I'll have to check. We run through it every I mean I don't know if this is right or not, but we run through it every year the appointment of animal control. So like I said, I don't know if there's actually a term that we're supposed to be following. And I, I don't possible. either. I mean we we should probably check the statute because there is you're if the, if the constable's them. elected, it's really different than if they're appointed. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we should probably check. My, my my reason for saying that is I am much more comfortable with appointing BJ and Dean animal control officers than I am appointing them as constables. Definitely follow up. Good discussion for the next meeting. Is that something you can follow up on? Check sure. the term. It's the term of con appointed constable that really needs to be checked, right? It's the term, and appointed constables has a much different connotation than the animal control officer. It has uh, different responsibilities. Yeah. And a constable with legal power is different than a constable without 
I recently read through all of what you're talking about. I get your point. Because the concept of like great right, issue tickets is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. They can actually go to the yeah. Okay. Moving on. Are we moving on? Yes. We will follow up in a future meeting. A motion that premature public disclosure of negotiations may place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Uh, as allowed by. No, it's a two-part. Okay. Did you second, Shane? I no, no, yes. did. did. Okay. Oh, you seconded. Did. Did we have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. That being the case, I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss contract negotiations. Yes. As allowed by 1 BSA 313A1. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. As have it, we are in executive session at 9 e Um, there's no action coming out of executive session and meeting is adjourned at 9.51. Stop recording. Thanks, everyone.